Hi, hey, I'm Morgan, and today I'm going to talk about something a little different and a little more serious-ish on my channel. I typically don't talk about this type of subject, but I think that with the current climate of what's going on in the world right now, and just my overall views on things shifting, I would like to talk about the best ways to support independent booksellers, especially in this time of the pandemic. So it's very obvious that things are not normal right now. Things are weird and uncertain and it's a scary time and it's especially a worrisome time for independent companies and local businesses, especially bookshops, especially with Amazon being such a giant that it is. Independent booksellers were already struggling due to the corporate giant of Amazon sweeping the book market and just being able to cut prices as low as they do. But now at this time of pandemic and not being able to go physically shop at independent booksellers, it's a really hard and uncertain time. So I wanted to talk about the best ways to support independent booksellers, why it's important to support independent booksellers, and anything else of that nature. This is obviously going to be a bit of a longer video. Grab a snack, grab a tea, grab a coffee. I've opted for coffee today and every day. This all comes with the caveat and the disclaimer that Obviously, buying books is a massive luxury and a privilege right now. Not everyone is in a position to be able to afford or buy books at this moment. And if you are financially struggling or don't have a reliable source of income due to the pandemic, don't feel like you have to listen to any of these tips or like you have to buy books in any sort of way. Don't do it unless you are able to. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to be able to have income and to be working during this time and to be able to support independent booksellers. My first recommendation for sure is if you're able to get a hand on the zine How to Resist Amazon and Why by Danny Kane, highly recommend it. It's a wonderful piece of reading material that shows um, how Amazon harms independent booksellers and just industries in general. And it's written by uh, the owner of the Raven Bookstore. Like I said, this is going to be things that I've found that support independent booksellers and I've also reached out to an independent bookseller in my area, Gary, who is the head of marketing and social media at The Book Loft, my favorite independent bookstore. I reached out to him and asked if he would like to lend some insight for a video that I'm doing this video and he was so wonderful to get back to me. So I'm going to go through my list of things and then I'm also going to read Gary's direct message. So. The biggest thing that I want to talk about is the why. Why independent bookstores need support now more than ever, and why, if you're going to buy a book, why you should purchase it from an independent bookseller. The main thing is that Amazon has deprioritized their book orders. They're obviously prioritizing more essential items. Amazon has also just been treating their employees not the greatest to my knowledge. To my knowledge and research that I found that Amazon employees are not being paid hazard pay at the moment. And obviously there are a lot of places not providing any additional service or hazard pay, but I know that Amazon is a huge corporate giant and they are not prioritizing the health or well-being of their employees because there's profit to be made, so. Also, Jeff Bezos and Amazon don't give a fuck about your books, books that are coming out about supporting book communities. They don't give a shit. Like I said, it's all under the caveat that books are a luxury and books are a huge privilege to be able to buy right now. But it does need to be said that Amazon doesn't give a shit about their employees, let alone about the books that you're buying or the books that are being shipped out, whereas independent bookstores, yes, are closed in the sense that you can't go to an independent bookseller and browse the shelves and buy something. However, they're doing that to be able to prioritize your health, their limited employees' health, as well as still be able to safely get your books packed and shipped to you. I know, for example, the Bookloft was doing curbside pickup and local delivery for a few days, but once things started to get really bad here in Ohio, the book loft closed those options, but independent booksellers are still being able to walk their shelves and hand pick your books and ship things out really quickly, especially during this time, which is so impressive and I'm just so grateful to the book loft. That is the biggest thing is that these stores are closed, but that doesn't mean that they don't require support. Giving your money to an independent bookseller 
helps ensure not only that they're getting your support and that you're getting your books, but also that they're able to come back from this pandemic and have the lights on and be able to have their space and be able to provide books to you once all of this is over. The best way I can articulate it is that Amazon does not need your patronage. Amazon does not need your support to run their warehouses and to send things out. And independent booksellers do. At the end of the day, independent bookstores need any bit of monetary support that they can get, especially while their doors are closed. I know I mentioned the Bookloft a lot, but that's uh, the independent bookstore that is closest to me and that I adore supporting and that I will support until the end of my days, basically. The Bookloft is a huge tourist attraction and most of the business they get are on Saturday afternoons when people are traveling to Columbus, people go out of their way to shop there, and they've lost a lot of their business because no one's traveling, the book loft is closed, they're missing out on a lot of their business. So if I'm able to order like two or three books or order like their mystery box that they're doing, I'm going to do it because they're my favorite store and the thought of not being able to go back to the book loft, like my favorite place in the whole world after all this ends, is devastating to think about. That is obviously a huge reason as to why it's important to support indie bookstores, in my opinion. Indie bookstores give back to the community in so many ways. They're a great place to have discussions. Most indie bookstores have book clubs and gatherings, not during a pandemic, but you know what I mean. There are so many ways that independent bookstores give back to you, your community. Being able to support them the way they support the community and support reading is crucial. Absolutely crucial. Morgan, how can I support independent bookstores if I can't go to the bookstore? I'm so glad you asked. There's tons of ways aside from like obviously you could order online. Some bookstores are still doing curbside pickup. I know Barnes & Noble is. I'm sure there's some independent bookstores that are. Here in Ohio all of our independent bookstores are shipping only. If you have a bookshop in your area that is still providing either curbside pickup or local delivery, definitely utilize that if you can. If you're able to get them the day that you order them, that's awesome. That's super exciting. However, let's say an independent bookstore in your area isn't doing curbside pickup or delivery. You could always place an order on their website for it to be shipped to you. It definitely may take a little bit longer because these are people hand packing, hand writing, and delivering the package to the post office and then to you. And that takes a little extra time, especially with the limited staff that most bookshops have right now because they don't need all 10, 15, 20 plus employees on the floor like they would on like a busy Saturday, let's say. So if you do go that route, uh, I'll get to this once I read Gary's message, definitely show some patience, not only towards your booksellers, but also to your postal workers. Postal workers are working so hard right now that we're able to social distance and I just respect anyone that's working in an essential workplace right now. It's just, it's so crucial that we treat people with patience and respect. You could always order the books online, get them shipped to you. It may take a little bit longer than let's say an Amazon delivery, but you're supporting somewhere that needs your support. The next way is some bookstores online have just a little button where you could just donate a sum of money, a certain amount, to your choosing, to their store. I think that being able to just donate some money to a bookstore is a really wonderful way that you can support them as well. Let's say you're really into audiobooks, right, and you want to listen to some audiobooks. One of the leading websites for audiobooks is obviously Audible, which is owned by Amazon. I recently did some research and found out that every time you utilize the, like, book switch out, like, return system, with Audible, they charge a fine to authors, especially independent authors, which is really shitty. So if you want to listen to some audiobooks, but you're kind of wary about supporting Amazon, I have for you a wonderful recommendation, and that is Libro FM. It's Libro.fm. I have a referral link um, where if you click on it and you sign up, you'll get your first month, your first audiobook. For free. It doesn't give me any commission of any kind. I'll get a free audiobook if you continue your subscription, but that's up to you. And you're wondering, Morgan, how does this support independent booksellers? It's an audiobook website. Well, when you sign up for Libro FM, uh, they'll give you a full list of independent bookstores. You can go by area and type your city, your state, 
and they'll give every independent bookshop in that area and you can choose one to support. It's the same price as Audible, so it's $14.99 a month for a credit. You can change that credit in for a book and then any other book you want is discounted at like 30% off. There's some books that are 36% off. I saw one at 50% off the other day. And any money that you spend through Libro FM supports that independent bookstore that you choose. And if you don't choose a specific independent bookshop, it goes into like a pot to support all independent bookstores. Also, you can actually pause it to where you can like skip as many months as you want and then resume it whenever you're like back in a situation where you want to pay for it. So you don't have to full on cancel your subscription and then re-get it if you're in that mood. The credits also don't expire. You can use them towards essentially everything. There are some like books that are restricted by publishers to use credits with, but they're as discounted as much as Libro FM can provide. They have the same, literally the exact same setup as Audible where you buy, the, where you get them on the website, you download them on the app. I like the Libro FM app a lot better than the Audible app. They have speed cho like choices that you can pick. I love it. I like Libro FM a ton. I'm currently listening to Final Girls by Riley Sager on there. Excellent. So if you want to utilize my referral link and get an audiobook for free, you can click the link in the description and support independent booksellers. Another great way that you can support independent booksellers, let's say you don't want to donate to their website, but you don't know what book you want to buy from them because you can't peruse the store. And one of the best things about independent bookstores is being able to wander the aisles and kind of blind date with a book, it, you know, like grab a book, be like, oh, this seems interesting and buy it right then. How about this? <laughs> you could buy a gift certificate from those bookshops. A lot of independent bookstores have links on their websites where you can just forthright just buy a gift certificate to use at a later time. So you're taking, let's say like $50, whatever. Let's say you wanna spend $50 at a local bookstore. You can buy a $50 gift certificate and then whenever the bookstore reopens, you can take it and that can be your book money. And you're still supporting the bookstore in this time and you're also able to get some books after all of this when you have the ample time to peruse a bookshop and pick something out. I think gift certificates are a wonderful way to give gifts in this time. If you have a friend that loves books and you don't know what they want, you can get them a, a gift certificate to a bookshop for after everything is <laughs> blown over, so to speak. I think that gift certificates are a phenomenal way to go. Those are all of the things that I thought of. And then, like I said, I reached out to my friend Gary, who's a bookseller, and he gave some phenomenal insight I didn't memorize all these, so I'm just going to read from his list. Some of our things may overlap. So these are some ways to help bookstores that'll make your dollar go the farthest. First you have buy gift cards to redeem later, buy direct from the shop. Try to buy items that are in stock if possible. So some of the reason why a book order might take a little bit longer to get to you is because some of those items might not be in stock at the bookstore so they may have to special order those things to then ship to you from the distributor. If you're able to see if a book is in stock at that bookstore, try to buy it directly from them. Like I said, uh, Gary also says, be patient. Since online sales are only a small part of our typical day, a mass influx of orders is a logistical nightmare and it takes a little time to process and ship. So showing some patience, don't directly call out a bookstore on Twitter because they didn't send your book the day you ordered it. If you have an issue with your order confirmation, you can always respond to their email or email them. I hate seeing people drag independent businesses on social media, especially during a pandemic. It's, it's not the fucking time, Margaret. You'll get your copy of The Hunger Games soon enough. Buy from the bookstore at the end of the world page. Uh, the website is bookshop.org. I'll link that in the description. Uh, this was created by furloughed booksellers in New York City to help out during the crisis. There's also the B the Bank Foundation, which was created as a disaster relief for both indie bookstores and booksellers, and they're currently helping booksellers with bills. So you could donate to that as well, and that helps a lot of independent bookstores with bills and cost of staying open during this time. And the last thing is he said, and of course online support, whether it's retweets or just a message saying you miss being in the shop, that really helps us get through the day. Let's say you're not in a position to financially support indie bookstores, just a little message on Instagram or like 
Twitter saying, oh my gosh, I just really wish I could be at the book loft today. I really wish I could be at Prologue Bookshop or anything like that and tagging them and letting them know that they're cared about and they're respected and thought about in this time goes such a long way. Obviously put your health first, put your budget first, don't do anything that you're not able to comfortably do during this time, but if you're able to spend a little extra money on the luxury of supporting somewhere independently, I highly recommend it. I think that it's really crucial, especially during this weird, weird time. And that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope that it didn't run on a little too long. I think that's everything that I wanted to say. If I have anything additional, um, you can look at the description, I guess, and I'll have all the links for places that you can donate as well as a referral to Libro FM. But that's gonna do it for today's video. Uh, if you have anything that you would like to suggest or say, leave it in the comments. I love talking to you guys and I think this is a really beautiful way to open a dialogue and ways to support each other during this time as well. Yeah, I don't wanna tell you to like or subscribe to my channel. If you wanna do those things, that's amazing and that's really cool and I appreciate your support, but that's not really what I like to do during really serious topical videos like this. It feels disingenuous to me. My name is Morgan, uh, this is Morgan Reads. I hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Stay safe, wash your hands, and happy reading. Okay, bye! Did I really just say wash your hands? It needed to be said. <laughs>